Okay, hi, welcome back to another episode of Baking Geek. Today's going to be a special one. We're making a, um, I don't even know what to call it. Yeah, you can give a ghetto any sort of name. But basically, we're going to be making a chocolate um, ghetto that, hang on, I'll just adjust the camera angle there. There we go, that's a bit better. Um, <clears throat> it's a chocolate ghetto. At the end of it, we get, it's got, um, what you're going to need for it is a chocolate genoir. Now, I've, I've made this up in, in advance. Um, I've, I've got a recipe out there for chocolate genoir, so please look it up. You're going to need some ganache. You're going to need some sugar syrup. Now, sugar syrup is 50% water, 50% sugar. You can boil that up and just bring it to the boil, and then that's it. So, you know, what else we've got is some nice frangelico here. Oh, this is going to be good. So, what's going to happen is we're going to take this genoir, and we're going to line a, um, a dome-shaped bowl. Now, what I've already done is I've already uh, pre-lined it with uh, cling film, okay? So, oh, glad rep in Australia. <laughs> okay, that's the, that's the English version of it. So, we, we've lined it, and we're gonna, we, what we're going to do now is we're going to start to line the dome with this genoir, okay? We're gonna cut it up and it's gonna, we're gonna piece it together. It's gonna be a bit of a jigsaw, but don't worry. It's gonna, it's, it might look a mess at the start, but once it's frozen and we turn it out, it's gonna look like the most awesome Christmas pudding you've ever seen. But it's gonna be chocolatey, it's gonna be hazelnutty, it's gonna be, it's gonna have a little bit of hint of coffee into it. Um, it's, it's gonna be very exciting, okay? You're gonna love it. All right, the finished product. So this is stage two, okay? So the first stage would be, baking something like that stage two would be this you know piecing it together and this is something you can do in advance and put in the freezer uh, today I'm going to be making one two three I've got four molds already lined so we're going to be making a whole heap of it and it's going to go into a lot of cakes okay and that's going to sort of see us through Christmas I've got I give cakes away to my neighbors and other people as well okay so let's get into it so you've got your Genoa what you're going to do with that, oh god, I could just cut my head off there. Alright, let's turn it up a bit. Alright, there we go. Okay, so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so you're going to unwrap your Genoa. Uh, there may be some crumbs go everywhere. Be prepared for that. Um, now, I've baked this out particularly well. And one thing I always hear from people is, oh, is your, is your sponge moist? You know? What a silly question. <laughs> I actually prefer, folks, if they're a little bit on the drier side. Why is that? Because dry Genoa always soaks up more of the sugar syrup slash alcohol mix. But we'll get into that later, okay? Let's line it to start with. Okay. Um, you can start at the top. You can start at the bottom. I won't actually start at the bottom with this one. And so when you slice, you want it, the slices be uh, to be possibly about a centimeter thick okay so we're going to get probably four to five slices out of this and just turn the sponge as you're going around the genoa it's a beautiful genoa all right so that's the first one and we'll just continue that all the way you don't want them too thick okay like I said, I'll get four or five out of this. There we go, that's number two. Number three. Going for gold. Hopefully you've baked it out properly. And there's no eggy sort of bits hanging around at the top. It's three. I'll just turn it over like that. And trust me folks, if you're working in patisserie, this is how you do it. There we go, just rip the top off like that. Like I said, there will be crumbs. Okay, so just if there's any eggy bits, just, just peel them off to the side, just push that off there. That's okay. So now we've got ourselves four nice pieces. And we've got our mould. Right, so what we're gonna do. Just going to turn that upside down. We're just going to put a V slice into it and like that, possibly again. Okay. Can you see what I'm doing? Okay, yeah, right. Okay, so that's now got a slice in it. There's a little bit of a gap there. We can fill that. So I'll just get a piece of Genoa. 
and just stick that in like that. Now what we're going to do is start building up the size of it. Right, so that piece can go straight in. And you're going to get one of your other pieces and chop them off like that, like that, and like that. So that piece I can put straight in there. That piece there. As you can see folks, that's that's how it's lined. Don't worry, don't worry, it's all... <laughs> it looks a bit of a shambles at the moment, but trust me, when this comes together, it will come together. Okay, there's a couple of little bits that we've missed. So I've got one there, another piece here. Okay, so that's hopefully what you've ended up with. You've ended, ended up with a mould, it's, it's, it's all around. That looks beautiful. What we're going to do with that next is we're going to make uh, like a croc chocolate creme chantilly up and we're going to put that into there. It's going to have gelatin in it so it's going to set so don't worry about that. And yeah, we're going to use frangelico and hazelnuts and ganache. We're going to use all sorts of exciting stuff. So I'm going to line the rest of my moulds and I'll be back in a second. Okay. Okay, folks, so I've lined all our moulds. So it looks like I've got one, two, three. I've got a couple of smaller ones there. I've got out of just two Genoise. You want to leave yourself a little bit for the middle section. Um, we're not going to need much, possibly a, a much, much smaller round bit of Genoise for the middle section. And for the bottom section, I've actually got some mud cake left over in the freezer. We're going to use mud cake on this as well. Why not? <laughs> okay. All right, so... Okay, so now you've got your mould lined, it's, you've got the clean glad wrap in, in your bowl. Okay, what we're going to do, you look, you could use rum for this, but it's Christmas time and I've splurged. I've gone and bought some Frangelico to try and impress everyone. <laughs> okay, alright, so anyway, we're just going to pour an amount of Frangelico in this, okay? It's <clears throat> into the sugar syrup, so it's going to... Oh, that smells gorgeous, okay, this is going to be fantastic. The worst thing you can do is probably put too much in. You want the flavour to be present, but you don't want it to overpower the cake, okay? You, you want to be able to taste the chocolate. We're going to put some coffee in this one as well, and some I've roasted off some hazelnuts. We're going to get into the Chantilly cream in a, in a second, but first of all, we're going to prepare the moulds as far as we can go before the cream actually enters it, okay? All right, so let's start. So you've got yourself a... Geez, I bought this one today. I've never used one of these ones. It's, it's basically, I've got, I've got a jug and I've got sugar syrup in there and I've poured Frangelico into it. So this is a, um, looks like it's a baitware sort of um, brush. You know, I normally use horsehair brush, that sort of thing, because it holds a lot. Yeah, you know, I've never used one of these before, but you know, <laughs> let's give it a go. All right. So you want to paint as much as you can into this mold. Douse the sides with it heavily and let it carry it. Basically, that's going to suck every bit of it up. And like, it, like I've said, people tell me, oh, is the, is the sponge moist? It doesn't need to be because we're going to make it moist. This, this is the whole thing about doing a gatto. Got to change your mindset, folks. Once that's in there, you can give it a bit of a push just to see if it's taken. Yes, that's taken. All right, I'm just going to repeat that with the rest of these moulds. And when we come back, we're going to be into the whipping of the cream. Okay, all right, back in a second. Okay, so we've um, lined our moulds with uh, the Frangelico sugar syrup. Okay, next thing we're going to whip our cream. So what you want to do is get your mixer sorted. It doesn't matter if you don't have a planetary style mixer, you just need to... Um, yeah, you can use a food processor with a whisk attachment if you want. Okay, so let's get into it. I've got about... I'm going to knock up a fair bit of cream for this because I've got like three cakes that I've got to do. So, is it, if you have trouble with um, cream splattering outside the bowl, what you want to do is get the cream 
um, almost develop first and then start pouring a little bit more liquid into it so it just keeps taking and taking that way it doesn't spill out all over your mixer okay and you don't want to walk away from your mixer either we're just going to pour a little bit of sugar in there but you want it sweet but you don't want it you know toxic sweet you know uh, and we're going to pick up a lot of flavor just out of our uh, ganache and that that we're going to use in it as well it's going to carry a fair bit of sweetness i can already tell that every oh well one of my best sayings is never walk away from fresh cream while it's with him because it will turn on you like that okay so we can just start adding more Let it take that up, just keep adding more and more. I've got three lots of 600 mils here, so that should do for the amount of cakes that I need to do. You can just sort of leave that there, let it drip into it. That's just start to go real quick. Okay. Back off, I'm getting a little bit of splatter. Now, what you want to do is take your cream to about, I'd say, 80, uh, 90 percent of the way. What we're going to do is we're going to be working this in another bowl when we're putting the ingredients through. So, all right, what you don't want to do is overwork your cream. Same as same as a cheesecake, when you're doing a cheesecake, you don't want to overwork it. It is going to go through a little bit more. fridge for a second. What I'm going to do is get my gelatin mix started and I'll be back in a sec. Okay we're back all right so what we've got we've whipped our cream and I've just um, beat up a whole heap of hazelnuts which I've roasted off earlier. Uh, I've de-skinned them uh, you make sure you want to do that because the skins are quite bitter. Um, this will keep your hazelnuts nice and sweet. And we've also got coffee here. I've heated up my gelatin. Hang on, I'll just grab that. Now this is about 20 grams of gelatin into about 140 mils of cold water. You will allow it to bloom and set it in the fridge. Then just, yeah, instantly just bring it out and chuck it in your microwave. Now this, this will be the glue to hold the whole lot together, okay? So you want to get your gelatin in. I've got an amount of ganache here. Um, I think I weighed it, it was about 400 greens, but I'm doing three cakes, so if you're going to do less, yeah. Mind you folks, that gelatin I just told you was for three cakes as well, so. We've got our gelatin, we've got our ganache. What else are we going to put in there? So, um, what other flavors go well? Um, coffee goes well. We've got some coffee here. Yeah, a bit of granulated coffee just with some hot water. Throw that in. Oh, that's gorgeous. Yeah, it, the smells are really getting there already. 
And last but not least, we're going to put some Frangelico in, because why not? Alright, just that much. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know, don't, at this point you do not need to measure. What's going to happen is the um, gelatin is going to help set all of this, okay? So that's it's a bit warm at the moment. What I've got, actually, I've got one of these blue ice packs. Now, you can pop that under there and that will sort of help with the chilling process, but at the same time, what we're going to do is we're going to start just add a tiny bit of cream to that and allow it to take. Now this mix is already cooling down with that ice pack underneath it. You want to keep it mobile. starting to cool down. Yeah. Now you don't want to throw your cream into a hot mix. That's the worst thing you could possibly do. That will split your cream. You'll end up with yeah, split cream basically. Yeah. Just constantly feel the temperature. Yeah, that I feel that could probably go just a little bit more. And as we're adding cream, it's bringing the temperature down as well. That temperature's coming down fairly fast now with that addition. So we're just going to keep adding a bit more. Now as I've added this last lot, look, I don't want that anymore. I'm going to pull that out and just let this ride. folded through folks. Okay. Right. And you want to get all that stuff up from the bottom. Wait. Tries to escape the bowl. Get it back in. Now I've, I've even done this in a big old whisk um, wok. Sorry guys if you don't have a bowl big enough like this one. I just like the size of this one, it's huge. I can do quite a bit in this. And that's going to be the last of it to go in. going to stir the bottom through as well. Now I don't know what the French term for this one is, I think it's like a creme chantilly. hands a bit of a clean before we start to line our moulds. Okay, Let's get rid of that. Okay, <coughs> okay we're going to grab our first mould with your cream and you're going to put a small amount in the top take up the top layer. There we go, we've got that one there. And we're going to get 
an amount of sponge. Look, I'm going to use this just to prove a point, guys. It doesn't need to be perfect, okay? So I've got three bits here. One's going to go there, one's going to go there. Uh, that bit's going to go there, that bit in the middle. You know, just piece it together. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so I've got, I need a piece that's sort of shaped like that. Break that off. And that, that, that. Just to prove a point to you guys, that's what it can look like in the middle. It doesn't matter. It, it, when this cake goes together, nobody will know. <laughs> How will they know? <laughs> okay, so we're going to more of the Frangelico. We're going with that. Okay. Yeah, get some more of this. Some of the good stuff. That's going to go all the way to the top of that mould. Maybe not quite all the way to the top, we're going to stop just short of the top. And we're going to leave enough, leave enough space for our... I've got... What I'm going to do on the base of this cake, guys, I've, I've got some leftover mud cake from another bit. You could easily use that uh, Genoa, but I'll tell you what, I reckon I can get... I've got three cakes, I reckon I can get three good slices out of this mud cake. And that will line the bottom of our Frangelico um, Christmas pudding. There we go. That one there. So there we go. So a nice, nice big slice of mud cake. And there we go. We finish it up. Now you just pull the sides back over um, on your glad wrap. Pull the sides over. Just like that. And that, that folks, is it. That's going to go in the freezer. We're going to pull that out, um, possibly Christmas Eve, decorate it. It's going to take maybe 20, 30 minutes tops. All the hard work's been done. Um, there you go. Hit the like button. See you next time. Bye.